Today is National Poetry Day and we're going to celebrate this at Grimm Co by taking you through a creative writing activity that will be seriously fun and will allow you to generate a really quick and easy poem. National Poetry Day is an annual event that takes place throughout the entire country and this year's theme is vision. So with that in mind, I would like to ask you a pretty big seismic question for you to consider in order for us to start generating our writing. And that is the following. When you think of your future, what emotion do you feel? So this links to vision because it's you looking at your vision for the future, what you see the future as looking like. And also it's quite a difficult question because you might feel more than one emotion. My question, when you think of the future, what emotion do you feel? There may be multiple emotions just mixing around there inside you. I need you to really hone in on the strongest emotion, the emotion that you feel is most deep rooted into you. And I would like you to write that emotion down, please. Now, emotions are something that we call abstract nouns. They are non-concrete concepts, which means we can't touch them like we can touch a chair or a chicken mole burrito. No, no, these are, are much harder to write about because we have to generate our own interpretation of what that emotion could mean. So I really want you to think about the emotion that you've just written down. This emotion that you feel the strongest when you think about your future or the future of our world. It's going to be a bit difficult to answer the questions that I'm about to ask you because they're all relating to this particular emotion. But give it a go. And I often find, as a gem top tip, going with your gut instinct is often the most effective. Answer the following questions. Question number one. If your emotion was something that you could taste, what would it be? You don't have to explain your answer, but I would like you to go into as much detail as possible. And I encourage you to use as many adjectives, as many describing words as you can to tell me that if your emotion had a taste, what would it taste like? Question number two. If you could reach out and touch your emotion, what would it feel like? If you could reach out and touch your emotion, what would it feel like? Question number three. If your emotion was something that you could hear, what would it sound like? If it was something that you could hear, what would it sound like? This could be a manufactured sound or it could be a sound of nature. It could be a piece of music. Whatever your interpretation of that emotion is. Question number four. If your emotion was something that you could smell, what would it smell like? What would that particular emotion smell of? And the final question, question number five. If your emotion was something that you could see, what would it be? If your emotion could manifest itself into a physical thing, what would it be? Hopefully, you've used lots of detail to give a really clear image in the reader's mind of what you're trying to communicate with regards to your emotion. It's really important that you use figurative language here so that we know how specific you're being about each one of these answers. If the sound of your emotion is birds chirping, well, tell us the mood of the bird or even the type of bird to give us even more information about what that emotion would sound like. Let's not forget that many people don't ever think about our emotions in this way. You're giving us a real great sideways glance on how these emotions could be interpreted. Once you're really happy with every single one of your answers, you can put them all together and you have created a poem that describes the way you feel about the future of your world. I've written an example to help you out in case you need a bit of guidance, but I wanted to choose an emotion that wasn't really relevant to the question. 
So when I was thinking of an emotion to write about, I chose the word boredom, being bored. And I'm going to read out my answers to the questions one after another so you can hear how we've actually created a poem. Bored tastes of Rivita, a cardboard crisp mattress that slices the inside of my mouth with its seeds that make it taste even more bland. When I reach out and touch boredom, it is perspex and transparent and it continues on forever, on and on and on, painless, but on and on and on. I hear repetitive elevator music, a fake fanfare of dullness pummeling my insides. The pause at the end of the track is a mirage of relief that swiftly disappears as the song loops again. Boredom has a sterile and clinical smell that permeates the room and my senses. An aerosol can blunting my mind with its vapours. If boredom was something you could see, it would be a grey stone statue in the shape of a flamingo, seemingly a beautiful and majestic bird, yet it is trapped in its rocky casing. Bullets and bombs can hit directly, but nothing can be felt. It's just boring. So, to celebrate National Poetry Day, Grimm & Co amicably challenges you to create your own emotion poem of how you feel about the future and how you feel about that abstract noun. You do not have to share any of your writing with us. We completely respect your own creative output. However, if you did want to share your work with us, we would gladly and wholeheartedly welcome and celebrate that. To do that, you can post it on any of our social media platforms or you could email grimapothecary at gmail.com. And there's nothing really more to say except happy National Poetry Day. <laughs>